If you've ever had the thought that things aren't made like they used to be, you'd be right. We've all experienced things like a toaster that suddenly stops toasting, a washer that stops washing, or leaving your phone on the charger all night only to wake up with a dead battery. And perhaps just as inconvenient as replacing those items is figuring out what to do with the old stuff. All e-waste has something in it of value, right? Because we're looking at metals and circuit boards and, and even and, and batteries and universal waste. But even with value, the U.S. generated 1.5 billion pounds of electronic waste in 2022. And as e-waste is the fastest growing solid waste stream in the world, that number is projected to significantly increase each year. However, places like Midwest Recycling Center, or MRC, are trying to fix that. The numbers are staggering. We continue to just generate um, more and more and more and more e-waste. Greg Cooksey is the Senior Director of Business Development at MRC, and he gave us an inside look at their demanufacturing facility in Park Hills, Missouri. This is where all of the end-of-life electronics collected by MRC end up. But the first stop is their refurbishing facility in Imperial, Missouri. So the kind of the mantra is the highest form of recycling is, is, is reuse. That's the first step in the process is, is this something that somebody else would want, right? And does it have value? You know, taking a laptop and doing data destruction on the hard drive, right? Sanitizing the hard drive, reloading the operating system on the laptop. And then, and then the laptop is available uh, for some, for, it's got a new life, right? So somebody else can now use the laptop. MRC aims to refurbish about 20% of the electronics they collect. The other 80% gets deconstructed into individual components and shipped out to downstream vendors, which refers to the companies that either resell or dispose of these components. And 0% ends up in the landfill. But how do we know that for sure? We bring in an air conditioner and we pump the Freon down. Freon goes to a downstream vendor. Then we take the compressor out. That goes to a downstream vendor. The metal goes to a different downstream vendor. Maybe there's some plastic on it. That goes to a different. So you, we may be looking at multiple downstream vendors that are going to get all these different types of materials and further process those. And we want to make sure that they don't just take the positive value, good stuff, and throw the rest in the landfill. That's where an R2 certification comes into play. Responsible Recycling Standard for Electronics Recyclers is an accreditation to ensure worker health, data protection, and environmental care. MRC is also registered with the EPA and enforce environmental laws like the Clean Air and Water Acts. So what's the difference between that and somebody that doesn't have a certification? Well, everything I just told you, isn't required. So are they doing all that stuff? I don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows. We know that when we're selecting downstream vendors, if they have that same certification that we do, we're all playing by the same rules, right? And then Department of Natural Resources also comes into our facilities. Uh, mm, typically yeah. that's usually annually. Um, it's kind of a surprise, it's unannounced visit. You know, they'll wanna see like your universal waste area and how you're yeah. handling batteries. Um, and, and that's something else too. Uh, so, so, so lithium batteries are- uh, That's a huge you, problem. Well, you had asked a question earlier, like what is one huge challenge for, what, what, what are some challenges? Uh, that's one that yeah. we're really struggling with right now because um, lithium, uh, lithium ion battery fires, right? Oh, I've seen TikTok videos of like dumpster yeah. trucks, you know, catching on yeah, fire. So we're, so we're you may have recently seen the news of the explosion at the lithium ion processing facility in Fredrickson, Missouri. These batteries are increasingly necessary right. for electronics, such as cell phones, laptops, and electric cars, but they pose a lot of challenges in both manufacturing and disposal or recycling. And lithium ion battery fires are just one environmental hazard to consider with e-waste. When dumped in a landfill, they pose the risk of contaminating the soil and groundwater with toxic metals and chemicals. 
But despite the negative environmental and financial consequences of improper disposal, electronics can be difficult for consumers to get rid of. Whether it's the obstacle of transporting the large, heavy items or paying fees that are sometimes associated with recycling. What we know is that if it costs too much money to recycle something, then the knee-jerk reaction is to do what? Not recycle it. About 90 to 95 percent of the material that comes into our facility, we don't charge for. We, oh, wow. So we're charging for, you know, TVs, right? And stuff that contains Freon, appliances that contain Freon, like refrigerators and dehumidifiers and freezers, because, you know, there's, there's, there's additional labor costs in that and Freon recovery that we do. Think about those old tube TVs. We'll see people drop those off and they'll say like, hey, it still works. The, 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 the tube that's in that TV uh, has lead in it. It's going to go to uh, a fully vetted downstream smelter. Um, but that TV lasted 20 years, right? Flat screen TVs today, I, I, they're not lasting 20 years, right? What, what? Maybe they're lasting five years. So planned obsolescence. Uh, planned obsolescence is the business strategy where products are intentionally designed to break or become out of date within a set amount of time. You've probably run into this when you update the software on your phone, only to notice the device now runs more slowly. This entices consumers to spend more money by continuously upgrading their device and in turn producing more e-waste. So more responsibility from the manufacturer and not so much from the consumer. Well, certainly. Or both. Right, both. I think, yeah. I think both. I mean, as a consumer, maybe that's something that we need to be asking ourselves. Like when we buy that device, um, okay, when we're done with it, what are we gonna do with it, yeah. right? Hopefully you bring it and you drop it off to us and we do the right thing with yeah. it, right? You, you do the right thing by bringing it to us and once we have it, we do the right thing. For Living St. Louis, I'm Brooke Butler.